Okay, welcome everybody. Today we have Philippa Lacey Brewer with us, who a lot of you will probably know because she runs British History Tours and um, we've looked at quite a lot of her videos and her recording. And if you are a Tudor Society member, she is our roving reporter at the Tudor Society, so she's out and about finding lots of things out. So she's here today, we've got a few questions for her. And the first thing I'm going to ask you to do, Philippa, apart from saying thank you very much for being here, is to okay. ask us to tell you a little bit about yourself and what you do and how you got into history. Okay, so yeah, so um, I run British History Tours. I've had it about, uh, uh, it's coming, I think I had the idea for British History Tours about 10 years ago. I think we've been incorporated for six. Um, and um, and I run it from home, so this is my nice home. Um, it's, it's office stroke studio because I, I do a lot of filming here as well. Um, my children are at home currently being uh, quiet and on pain of death <laughs> while we do this recording. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I got into history actually about, it's funny because I, and I, I think I share this with a lot of people, I didn't really get into history at school, it was after school. And I was actually reading um, psychology and management at university. So I would say psychology is my, that's my kind of, I, I like looking at people and why people behave in certain ways. So, which is great for history because it's really applicable. Um, but I was looking for a role model. I wanted someone I had some sort of synergy with. Um, and um, because I was doing, you know, business I was supposed to be like going into business and being a leader and all this and I couldn't find a role model in even like at the time in society that I really felt any kind of connection with so I started looking back into history and I mean there was there's a whole heap of women that I could have you know landed on but Elizabeth I was who I really um sort of hooked onto and got really into her story that's how I started traveling around history because I wanted to be in places that I knew she'd physically been in. Kenilworth Castle isn't that far away from me. So um, and Worcester Cathedral. So all these places I knew that I was literally walking in her footsteps. So I found that really thrilling. And then um, I realized to understand her story, I needed context. So I needed to go further back. And obviously we've got Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. And then to understand that it needs to go back and back and back. And then my, my interest just, you know, broadened and, and I, and I continued to travel as well to, to, to learn. And that's how I then sort of came around to the idea that I could do this for other people. And that's how British history tours started because what, you know, you, you probably do it as well when you go somewhere and you know, something's happened there and you're absorbing the atmosphere and then other people just shoot through and you're like you don't know what you're missing and I felt like that I felt like right I need to I need to help here I need to do yeah. something for other people so that's that's how it all started yeah because it means so much to us we can't understand why the people go, look at this it's amazing why are you not bothered yeah what's yeah. wrong with you people um so with British history tours um you do different things so we've mentioned that you do some like the roving reporter for the Tudor Society but you run the tours quite specifically themselves which you sometimes do all alone or in conjunction with other people like Claire Ridgway from the Tudor Society um but you also provide a more bespoke service don't you so what do you do with that yeah so we've got the um the group tour calendar each year so they're, they're tours that are set and people can can book onto those but I also so I'm available for, for people, you know, to, to hire if you like. It sounds a bit weird. Um, but yeah, so I, I accompany people. <laughs> I, I usually actually, I don't just accompany people. I put together the itinerary and that, that sometimes is actually without me. So, you know, some people might have three days they want to spend in London and want to know how to make the most of their time. So I'll put their itinerary together for them and or meet them for that time as well and actually take them around to places. Um, Part of, I mean, a lot of that obviously is the history, and um, but a big part of it is the logistics as well, knowing how to actually get get from place to place and in the best way and things like that. So, um, yeah, I really enjoy doing that because we can we really get into the the specifics of their interests. Yeah. So I, I really enjoy doing that. That's good. It's good fun. So, this is this is the rhetorical question. Is there a period that when people come to you and they say, I've got this, I want to know this, um, 
is there a place and or period that comes up the most, notably the most popular? Always the Tudors. Definitely, definitely the Tudors. Um, it's just such a colourful time period. Yeah. It's, it's by no means the only interesting time period, I have to say. Of <laughs> <laughs> English history. Street, you know, and and actually, it, it does sort of go with what what what's pricked people's imagination. So, you know, there's a lot of um, dramas about the Tudors, and I've noticed now that there's, the, you know, there's the Plantagenets of, you know, we've, we've had more yes dramas or whatever about the Plantagenets. So, so people are, are now more aware of that time period and more interested yeah. in that. But yeah, at the moment, definitely still Tudors are are it, and it, and it's it's an interesting one because it's it's um it's a bit more difficult actually to find physical things to do with the Tudors generally in London where most people are but it's um it's doable so yeah that's that's probably the main one yeah I mean that like I said that is a little bit of a rhetorical question because <laughs> you speak to almost anybody and that that's the sort of the thing that that comes up and I know when I've done things like researches for online book tours and you get things from like like the you know Stuarts or a bit further or whatever to find things like groups or um blogs or things like that is much much harder that just comparatively mm. there's much much less so you really do feel and i don't know how much the uh, the richard the third the reinterment may have contributed to that rise in interest in the plantagenets there must be some sort of correlation with i think so but then again as you said you have to go backwards and forwards to put things in context so we don't have the shoes yeah, without yeah. the Wars of the Roses, so to speak. So, because I love, yeah, I do love the Wars of the Roses. I'm, I'm quiet. Well, the Wars of the Roses, you know, I'll be recording about the Wars of the Roses later for this week in British history because it's um, this week that there was the Battle of Tewkesbury, which is like the the it sort of builds as like the final Wars of the Roses until the next time. You know, it's like <laughs> this, this is the final one between Edward the, the Fourth and Henry Wars the Sixth, and then of course later on we get Richard and Henry Tudor so um it's very interesting but then you know the Stuarts after them the Stuarts if you think the Stuarts went from Elizabeth I right through to Queen Anne which is when we had the Act of Union which is when we became Great Britain you know loads happened in the Stuarts we had another load of English civil wars under the Stuarts we had a time period where we had no monarch for 11 years we had no monarch um so I think um I think actually as people discover time periods they they become you know, it, it, there's always something interesting yeah. in, in them. Yeah, It's very easy. So. I think I was guilty of this initially, of thinking, I like the Tudors best. I'm just going to kind of stick around there. And then mm -hmm. something happened which made me have to move backwards because of something that I was doing. I was like, oh, I love this as well. And you think, well, maybe I should move forwards as well. And then I should. Yeah. It's very easy, I think, to stick in that spot, isn't it? And yeah. feel like that you've got it all down. And then actually, you've never got it all down, no matter how hard you try. There's oh, always something no. bringing yeah, out I, I've, to get us. I've spoken to Claire about this, and it's always the more research you do in something, you tend to have more questions as opposed to yeah. feeling like you've ever answered everything. Yeah, um, yeah it's the context, and also we start to understand how we're affected now by things that have happened mm -hmm. in the past. You know, there is a direct, there is, there is links, and there's but unless we understand what happened in, in the interim, um, it's more difficult to recognise. So it's, yeah, it's all very interesting. It's all very relevant. Yeah, and I think people feel that, oh, because it happened such a long time ago, 500 years or whatever, so my hair is wild, um, that it's not, it's not relevant or, you know, and I think you have to, you have to be interested in history and motivated, I think, to put those things together about how relevant it actually is so yeah maybe we're a bit yeah. biased well probably but that, i mean it's why i like doing it so we're i do all walk, right <laughs> we are right we are definitely. right yeah, yeah. um I, I so i do a walking tour of whitehall and westminster oh, wonderful. Um, yeah. which again i love doing because it's like we take for granted that you've got westminster abbey sat next to the house of parliament just up the road from downing street um you know, that's the area that Whitehall, it's called White, Whitehall. And then you go looking for Whitehall Palace, of course, Whitehall Palace doesn't really exist anymore. There's only like little bits and bobs around. You know, why is it, so so why is it called Whitehall? All this stuff we take for granted. And why why are those places situated where they are? And when you, 
tell the story you know that story goes back to like the roman times yeah. and it's relevant to us today so that's why i love it you can tell <laughs> I get really excited. no it is it's, it's never ending in a good way in a good way yeah totally um, so just a little bit more about the history tours themselves. And obviously, people can go to your website. And what I'm going to do is when I put this up, I'll put a link to all your social media underneath it. Thank you. Um, so just tell us a little bit more about the tours themselves, because they are amazing. The tours are very good. The tours, it's, inter it's funny because they're designed to be like a one. Well, they're like your ultimate perfect yeah. you know, holiday if you you love history um and they're designed to be sort of well there's, there's, there's no holds barred if you like so they're once in a lifetime style holidays but which i get i think there's a one in four people have been back on another one since and we've been running them three years so it's like they've come back straight away so once in a lifetime that you'll want to repeat um but they so they're themed so for instance, we do the Anne Boleyn experience, we're doing the Elizabeth I experience, doing a 1535 progress. Um, we've done Discover the Tudors, what else we've done? Executed Queens, yeah. around the Tudor Queens that were executed. So they're all based on a theme. We stay in lovely hotels, we have a nice coach, we go, you know, everything basically from the time you're picked up to the time you're dropped off is taken care of for you. Because my idea when I, um, came to do this was um if you love history like i do and you know you're gonna be really into learning it and you want to really absorb yourself in the places we're going we do talks so you're going to really want to listen to that person the talk so you don't want to be in a mediocre hotel you don't want to be thinking about what you're going to eat so everything else is taken care of basically but yeah we have um so we go to various locations again depending on what the theme is um and we have guest speakers come and speak we've got obviously claire ridgeway so the ones we're doing associating in association with the Tudor society claire is on all of those she's like a resident historian and um, the 1535 progress tour sarah morris is the resident historian on that um, as well as having other people come in. So we have um, Gareth Russell comes and talks to us, Owen Emerson at Hever, Leslie Smith, um, who's amazing. Jonathan Foyle is due to come and speak um, on the, well, he should have been on the tours that we've had to postpone, but he'll be um, definitely on future tours. So it's, it's basically just history absorption, yeah. <laughs> I, I think. I, I, I think it's, it's, it's all of those things. Immersion, I say people and people say well you know you could you can visit all those places yourself and absolutely you can but i think it's that That's fact good. that you know there are people coming in you couldn't arrange those talks yourself and you're staying for example in in sometimes in parts of heaver castle that you would not be able to access if you weren't on one of the tours no and, and, and just things like you know you and claire and or anybody else you may be with you're there constantly it's you know you have access to those people and that knowledge and that information which does make it an extremely immersive experience because you couldn't get away from yeah. the history even if you wanted to <laughs> that's, it. That that's it you're in your you're yeah. in this lovely history bubble and, and it's awesome so um and i think you know, somebody who loves tudors it's it's just you know you couldn't ask it, it is it is it's gone beyond even my own expectations you're with a group of people who have exactly the same love of the topic as you do. Um, and people, you know, I say about people coming back on the tours, the, the Elizabeth I experience, we've got 75% of the people on that tour have been on a previous tour and about half of them have been on a tour with each other. They're, oh, you know, they're friends, they've made friends for life. And they're coming back on another tour together, um, which, you know, I couldn't have planned for that. I didn't know that was going to happen, but, Oh my goodness, you know, how, how amazing is that? And then like you say with like Heaver, for instance, we hire Heaver, you know. <laughs> so you have we have the Aster Wing to ourselves for the time that we're there, which includes the lawns and the you we have got access to the tennis courts, although I've not seen anyone bother playing <laughs> tennis. People are playing croquet, we have a croquet lawn. Um, you can go and walk around. Like I can't play croquet. No, I you, won't you, play you, it. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can go and walk rounds um, before it opens in the morning, after it's closed at night. You know, I've got a virtual tour on YouTube, um, walking around Heber Gardens first thing in the morning. I've it's seen just magical. Um, it yeah, was just, watching, just watching it, just watching it was relaxing because it's... of the sunlight and the birds and it was so calm. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly as it was. Yeah. yeah. It just, that's worth it on its own, to be quite honest. It was good. It <laughs> it's was like good. just that on its own. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. It was so, so yeah, so it's, yeah, they are um they are amazing. Um I'm very proud of them. <laughs> well you should be. And I know I mean I, I I know Claire loves them as well. She really, really does. She's just in her element, isn't she? Yes. So, uh, yeah. yeah. You talk history. Honestly, yeah. Morning till night. It's it's great. It's great. And she's so knowledgeable and she's yeah. there all the time. So people are, you know, they get to pick her brains all the time that they're on that they're on the tour. Yeah. Um get brilliant questions. Really, you know, people are very knowledgeable themselves. So they come out with fantastic questions. It's really See, good. It's, I bet, yeah, you know, I if you did, I mean, how many do you have you been doing a year? Maybe about Four? That, that's three this year was going to be four obviously that's been scuppered slightly so um next year it could be about eight i don't know <laughs> okay. but you probably could they, they sell out really quickly don't they they do so it's best. Yeah. you can actually register can't you via your website to get the early access information so i yes. actually do that um and if you're not sure Definitely. if you can come on a particular tour if it's something that you're really looking at and you're interested in because sometimes yeah. they sell out like that don't they well, the um, so anyone on the list, it's called the Hear About Tours first list because yeah. that was that was the imagination I had at the time that I titled that. And everyone on that list gets um, a they they get to book on a tour seven days before it goes on general release. So they'll be, they'll get they get sent a private link if you like to the booking information to all the booking information and everything they need to do. Um, and so they get seven days to book on before anyone you know before the general public and actually the elizabeth first tour sold out within those seven days yeah. um so Probably. it's definitely it doesn't it's, it's free to join the list all you have to do is put up with me sending my videos to you <laughs> once a week and you don't have to watch <laughs> them if you don't watch it on their own i absolutely love those thank um, you because although it's again although obviously i gravitate towards the tudors which is how i well the story of how i am where i am is a longer one and it's not for now but I do like the Wars of the Roses as well, but it's very easy, like I said, to neglect those other periods. And sometimes <laughs> we were talking for quite a while, weren't we, before we came on? <laughs> sometimes it's quite a small story, but it's really, really interesting. And it's picking out those little things that then would have wider ramifications. Mm. But, you know, it's good to delve sort of here, there and everywhere. It's a really, really nice yeah. So that was the idea behind the This Week in British History, um, which I do. So I do a, a weekly video and it's, Obviously, not everything that happened in in the week in history, but I pick out the things. next week again. Before that would be like, yeah, that would be cute. I'll do them next year. I'll do some more next year. Um, that they, yeah, I pick out things that have happened. Um, so, for instance, this week we're continuing with the fall of Anne Boleyn. We've got the Battle of Tewkesbury. We've got VE Day. Um, and yeah, the idea is that it's not just. Um, a particular time period. I have to say, I do cover the Tudors quite a lot, but um, <laughs> but, 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 but it's I hard not to. Do. It's hard I not. Hard not to. Um, um, but yeah, uh, but again, with context, you know, if if something's happened, um, it's really interesting how many things have had a uh, goal. Um, I don't know. Um, but, but the same part of the same story happened in the same week, but years apart. Yeah. It's quite interesting. So the, 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 the Stuarts have. Um, a good example of some of the civil war, war stuff happened sort of within the same week and years apart and it's all linked so I try and kind of give give those links give a bit of context and it's just a bit, it's interesting stuff it's fun as well I said I I <laughs> to, to lay a surprise history question on you but I'm fairly confident that Oliver Cromwell is a descendant of Thomas Cromwell I do you know I look this up every time I'm asked? Um, he is, but it's I was some convoluted in my like pop quiz. It, 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 it's some convoluted way. It's mm -hmm. it's like it's by a a female line, I think. 
I, I don't quite know because obviously they've got the same name. I can't remember exactly how it goes. There is some um, link, isn't there? But there is yeah. there is some link. Yeah, I didn't dream but that. But it's not. Good. I don't think it's. Oh, he's his great great. Yeah, not great like a direct. I don't think it's not as neat as that. Yeah. yeah. Um. What what a lineage. Um. Yes. <laughs> so okay. Um. So sort of following on where I said to you, what do people ask for the most? And I do know the answers to this question and it might be obvious, but what is your favorite period in history? That's really so obvious now, isn't it? I can't escape that one. <laughs> you know, well, I, I think I'm just exactly the same as everybody else. I have the periods I gravitate toward and then something will get me interested in another period. I mean, I love the Romans. I absolutely love the Roman period um, because it's 2,000 years ago. So we talk, you know, we talk about the Tudors, we're 500 years ago. The Romans are 2,000 years ago, and yet we can still see their, uh, the, the, not necessarily full buildings, but, you know, we, we get, we've got a really good idea of their lifestyle here, um, the impact they had on the, the, not just the landscape, but the way we lived. Um, you know, so they're very interesting. And then, and then, like, the Celt, then when the, what we call the Middle Ages or Dark Ages, which is a really bad term for them, um, you know, the more I hear about them, and you go, you go, for instance, to the British Museum and look in the in the room that's got the Sutton Who um, find, and you see the intricacy of the jewellery that they they had, um, and realise there's there's just so much more about that period that we're not grasping at the moment that's interesting you know and that and actually looking at it from a female females in history point of view I'm really interested in um pre-Roman and when you know because really pre-Christianity Christianity in 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 England when we had tribes and women and men had equal status yeah. you know and women would go into it wasn't assumed that men went into battle and women stayed at home that's that's kind of a an assumption that comes later on so oh yeah I could just go on forever I think I feel well, like no, also I I, been, so I I labeled this video chat with Philippa one because I've got a <laughs> feeling <laughs> this won't be the only one there's lot there's lots to do there's lots to do and as you say I think people after about 48 hours would start to tune out because those two women are still still talking it's still talking <laughs> isn't it? so conversely so I know obviously you do love the Tudors as well so conversely this is a bit of a cheeky question is there anything comparatively that is occasionally a little bit of a yawn fest In history generally. Yeah. All about the Tudors. <laughs> no, in history generally. Um, I actually find family genealogy a real bore. <laughs> it I have comes up to say. Constantly, doesn't it? It's there constantly. Well, because I just, I remember, I, it's probably because it goes back to when my dad tried to get me interested in it. And I just saw that from his point of view, he'd picked the most interesting or he'd gone, he again, gone through the male line. The female line was generally, yeah. for some reason, not as interesting. Yeah. Um, and then realising that the records were so, I, I find the, I find the societal, the stuff that it throws up about how society worked, very interesting. Like we have, babies with the same name yeah. in the same generation because the first one died and there had to be a John. So there was two John, you know, that kind of thing. The fact that actually quite a lot of people didn't get married. So the idea that you follow records, you know, marriage and birth and death records goes out the window. There's a, there's a fascinating statistic about how many um, children aren't the father's child. Yeah. So yeah. That, that throws genealogy out the window as well. Um, and then also just if, if everything is working perfectly, just how many ancestors you've got per generation, you know, obviously just like four generations back and you've got whatever that would be. Um, I should have, I should have looked that up. Um, you know, it, just huge amounts of people in each line. So yeah, I'm like, mm, I'm I not think that interested. Um, in I know people who've done it and there's so much scope for error, like you say, but the there one thing I did love with that with them um, in the UK 
is Danny Dyer. So if anybody who is in the UK, and he's he's like um he's an English yeah. actor and he's a bit of an all right darling kind of like thing, isn't he? And oh, he's oh, a bit marmite. People love him or hate him, but he was on uh, the English version of Who Do You Think You Are? And they discovered that he had a direct image back to Edward III which blew his mind and it made for brilliant television because he then went back and did a two-part series didn't he like Trace and some of it is just hilarious right. the cod pieces that poor woman with the cod. I'll try and find that clip because I think it's on YouTube oh I felt so sorry for her but it was absolutely <laughs> brilliant and then didn't he get stuck in a tree or something with with a, a sword oh, I, don't know. I, I can't remember. it was awesome but you know that kind of really spiked because Although they tend to, tend to take celebrities, he's a little bit more relatable, isn't he? I think than than some yeah. people. And of course, and, you know, and he's on yeah. EastEnders and all stuff like that. Then everyone yeah. kind of went, but everyone's related to Edward the Third. Everyone, not everyone, but so many people are. Oh no, it's frozen. Oh, okay, we're back. Are we back? Yes, sorry. sorry just, yeah, so that was my internet. <laughs> we were having spicy internet issues, weren't we, before we came on. So, <laughs> um, yeah, they also said, well, everyone's related to Edward III. You can come back and yeah. kind of say, well, I, you know, I found this and this and this. And the, but yeah. the, the, the size of the population and the... Exactly. The virility of some of the members of the I mean, it's, it's an absolute statistical fact that we're all um if you're of british descent you're related to edward the third and i think european descent we're all related to charlemagne and then there's a point in history where literally everyone who's alive now has a point where we all have a common ancestor yeah even even I mean, there's a that I go on about it a lot. There's an amazing book called The History of Everyone Who's uh, the, a Brief History of Everyone Who's Ever Lived by Adam Rutherford, and he's a scientist, so he's he's not a historian, but he I think um, I think I came across him because he was talking about Richard III and how they'd worked out his you know, the, all the DNA tests around yeah. identifying. Yeah. Um, it, it's just I, I just point anyone, and it's a really interesting listen or read however you I'm, a, I'm an audible person so i, <laughs> I listen to my right. books it's time um, you were saying yeah. <laughs> it's literally just time but it's it's great and anyone who's interested it just to give some context it's really interesting was darwin yeah. right <laughs> reading that was darwin right do we see over time the natural selection coming in that's another issue as well that's yeah. come up a lot of course everyone you know darwin was you know of his time and he had context and he had his own beliefs and I, um yeah you know survival of the fittest sort of thing yet yeah, we still have a lot of disease we still have you know is that quite i don't know i don't yeah. know that was a bit of a curve for you yeah, that was, when we i suppose when we were when he was writing we didn't have like modern medicine and travel and knowledge and you know no. in those days it was a lot more relevant than yeah. where now we have things yeah. like health and safety that save an awful lot of people that probably yeah. well, that's true yeah, exactly that's true yeah. medicine um yeah but yeah. you know as a, even even c-sections for instance yeah, yeah. yeah. if you yeah, didn't have those one. a massive one you know we sure. have a lot of women alive now who are perfectly healthy and well you know so who who wouldn't have survived childbirth so the survival of the fittest thing is a bit of a i think it's a bit it was it, of its time and it's probably got a yeah exactly. iterate a few iterations now so. but it is on my audible wish list so at some juncture i will get around to listening to that okay so this is i think quite a relevant one at the moment okay do people learn from history mm -hmm. i don't just mean the facts they need to know to pass through an exam i mean collective I know what you mean. on the whole <laughs> i went to a talk interestingly it was a it was an intimate talk with dan snow and the susanna lipscomb there and sam willis and they 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 posed this exact question that was the the premise of the whole talk and i went into it thinking the answer would just be a resounding yes of course we must have learned from history you know if it's gone before then we don't want to repeat stuff and da 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 da, da. And yet, um, the answer actually, well, it, there wasn't a definite answer, it was a discussion, but it was not really actually. But I mean, I, I think back to my childhood and I remember learning about con the concentration camps for the first time. 
um, the Nazi concentration camp and, and asking my dad, well, why, why would, why would that happen? Yeah. And, and like what you know what and 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 and, and I, it was sort of all it was a whole discussion around world war Two, and like and he was like right so that it doesn't happen again you know we're going we're doing we're having a war because there's this kind of thing going on and we don't want it to happen again and yet we already know we know that it's still going on in other you know we, in other parts of the world it's it, that hasn't stopped so um i'm not sure we learn as much as we um we wish we would learn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So those who study history are doomed to watch people make the same mistakes it's or something repeat. like that. Yeah. You know, Shirley Bassey. <laughs> it's all just a little bit of it's history true. repeating. <laughs> She's not wrong. She's not wrong. But that because is... things generally don't change. You know, we are we have our instincts, we have our emotions, we um we're inherently uh lazy and convenience based um that's not a judgment that's just kind of the way we're programmed yeah absolutely that's why we have a plastics issue because you know instead of going and getting your milk from a in a glass bottle we decided we prefer to pick it up in plastic and i don't know it's just i wish we did but i i not as much as i not as much as i think we could actually yeah yeah i think that's that's pretty fair um but then sometimes, like with the environment, the plastics issue is forced upon us. I think if it wasn't forced upon us, we'd go, oh, well, we'll do that. Yeah. In well, a few years. We'll worry about it later. But actually, we now yeah. don't need to worry about it. Well, there's a difference, isn't there? We, we, depending on what the priority is at the time. So, you know, plastic is more hygienic. You know, do you want to really pick up your chicken from... You a know, pile of chickens. <laughs> yeah, you know, we probably... No, actually, I'm, I'll, I'll <laughs> stick thinking with about it plastic wrapped yeah. one um so, <laughs> yes, and things like that yeah yeah so it's it's there's convenience and there's actually there's good reasons why things have changed but there are repercussions everything has other things that go with it there are no panaceas there you know there's no solutions that have no other yeah ramifications obviously what's happening now is history you know, however long people read about this, go, well, that didn't sound too good. But <laughs> a lot of the decisions are being made in individual countries and globally, they are maybe the best decisions in some instances, but then yeah. course, they have knock-on effects. So, okay. like, you know, whatever decision yeah. people make for schools, that you know, A, B and C, and you've just kind of got to pick the one that's the least worst. Yeah, if I think... It has ramifications. We've just got to do what we can do it's it's very tricky this situation currently isn't it yeah um gareth russell's interesting because he he often talks or I've, I've heard him a couple of times refer to being careful not to write history backwards and um you know writing history with hindsight so mm. it's already started with this you know why didn't we do this three months ago well you can only play the cards that you're dealt so whatever information you have at the time is what you act on i suppose and yeah we're definitely going to look back and go we should have done this a bit different um but everything's done i suppose at the, at the time it's done in a particular circumstance with the information that's available and trying to balance i think all the things that are trying to be balanced at the moment um we won't hear about they're not the things that are going to be written down in history books it's yeah. just going to be the actions that were taken perhaps so we will forget quite quickly that there was another consideration because that's not what's going to be written down. Does that make sense? And then, and then but what's interesting then is if we think about that, if we think about what we're going through now and apply it to everything else we try and understand in history and realise that there's so much more that was probably going on that we, we just, we don't yeah. know what we don't know. Yeah. And there'll be stuff that perhaps would change our mind on things that we just don't know about. I'm sure if it happens again, because I suppose, that, you know, because of how global travel, et cetera, that's what's been a big issue with this, that people talk about the, the Spanish flu pandemic. And yes, but the world, again, there wasn't the travel like there was. It was sort of very, in that respect, it was a little bit different. Everything moves around so much. So this well, is a possibility that it is something that could happen again, I guess. But well, interesting. Uh, maybe we learn some things 
maybe we'll have learned from history <laughs> and um, maybe so uh, i i um i actually covered the spanish flu i have a i should have mentioned this as well i have a british history membership group oh, so, yes, um so it's like a, a monthly subscription so 20 pounds a month but and we uh, we covered the spanish flu um a couple of weeks ago and what was interesting is spanish flu came at the end of uh, World War One, mm. but not World War One hadn't finished. So you had lots of troop movement. Right. So that, yes, yes, yeah. Um, that that had an impact on. Well, it had a direct impact on physically people were moving mm. and taking the virus with them, and it had an indirect impact in that. Who wants to talk about a flu when we've got a war going on? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it wasn't. It was. It was almost seen as don't make a fuss about the flu. Yeah. we've got a war going on and so that indirectly um or directly if you if you take it that way uh also contributed to the spread yeah so had it happened five years later it probably would have been a very very different scenario yeah, yeah maybe we wouldn't have seen it so big yeah definitely see well, as that goes back to things not happening in isolation again yeah exactly. Oh, exactly. interesting. I don't know much about the Spanish flu, but I've definitely learned something very useful today. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So this is something that um, we have touched on before, and I think I've definitely heard a lot of people mention. But you've been to loads of different places, obviously, and some have a lot of things there, and some have less. And you know, your experience while you're there, you're there for different reasons. So sometimes you're there for leisure, or you're there for work, or you're with a group of people. But do you have that feeling where you, it's really hard to describe isn't it where you go in and the history just hits you mm. and I can't find a way to put that into words so I'm going to see if you can find a way to put that into words and then do you find don't worry if you can't because I think it's impossible to be honest but I for example go to Hampton Court and I especially like in the gallery and then it, it kind of engulfs me in there a little bit more than it does a lot of the other places I've been to so do you have that well there's some places you go to that it just really absorbs you in and others you know it's there but not quite as much I think yeah I think um it's not always the obvious ones. I, I suppose something like the Great Hall at Hampton Court is is an obvious one because you you walk in and the idea of it when it was built, uh, you know, was that you would walk in and be, you know, in awe straight away. And I everyone find was in there. They were all there, all of them. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes, exactly. And you're yeah, yeah, exactly. You're you you you're you're looking at the same roof, although albeit a little dulled down in colour, but. Um, but even down to there's a, um, a place called Langley Chapel uh, that's a national trust, um, not national trust, I think it's English heritage. And, and you go and it's a church which is now in the middle of a field. And the, 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 the key is in the door. So you, you let yourself in and when you leave, you lock it and you leave. Um, so it's not a grand place. It's not one that probably gets many visitors. You know, they leave the key in the door, which is pretty fantastic. But you can go in and you can sit in the car, you know, in on the pews where people would have gone and, 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 and um, you know, gone to church. It's, it, it, that kind of thing is yeah. amazing. Um, and then things like sometimes the, the uh, there's a church in... Uh, London that I can't remember the name of right now where um, Thomas Farron is supposedly buried um, the, the guy who uh, caused the great fire of London um, and when I went in there it's visually it's a beautiful place but they had incense burning and they had and someone was playing the organ and it was like Whoa! you know it was like I could have been I could have been 500 years ago peasant coming in off the street and totally taken into a, a beautiful world of you know lovely smells and sounds and and visuals and 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 that actually was really powerful because you could really feel the pull of of that um it made me really think about you know how people would have what what, what sanctuary you know church was for people in their you know probably quite dull lives yeah dull dangerous dirty. Well, dangerous yeah dull as in yeah. mud and yeah you know. yeah but well, then I, um, suppose, I suppose if that's what your life is and what you're used to i guess you don't question it maybe 
Yeah, and maybe we're making assumptions again there that yeah, you know, that was because to us that would seem like really like what to go and sit in the mud and it's freezing. And... Yeah, and actually, <laughs> would humans really have just gone and sat in mud if they didn't like it? No, probably yeah. not. You know, so maybe, it's probably just, not. I, I don't know. It's as we were talking lots about this before we started the video, weren't we? But you know how easy it is to make assumptions and presume it was like this or place our modern interpretations of things yeah. or things that happened many many years ago but actually that is in no way at all realistic and as you said as well so rightly people don't change inherently we are the same yeah and you know so what was hard then emotionally is hard now emotionally and you know the, the context is slightly different and how you had to cope with things yeah. was perhaps a little bit different but we're still people and we're still what we are at the end of yeah. the day yeah we are so like for instance the battle of Towton you know we, we know now it was like the bloodiest battle ever fought on English soil just to put into 30,000 men in one day yeah horrendous and I don't I don't think just because that was at that time that people went oh well there's a war yeah. going on what do we expect you know I don't think we're English, think, let's put the kettle on and it'll all be fine no we didn't even have tea so I don't know how they coped at that <laughs> time I don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah literally, um, how did people get through life? There was no tea. no chocolate, no tea, no coffee. I'm not selling it at all here. To be fair, no. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay where I am. Thank you. <laughs> I think one of my favourite annual events that I try to go to every year now, and I'm hoping it's going to be on this year, is um, Bosworth Medieval Festival, which yeah. they hold at the time of the anniversary of the Battle of Bosworth up at where they thought the battlefield was. Close enough. Close enough. And um, the first year I went, I was only sort of really starting to, it was around the time I started to work for Claire and Tim Ridway. And um, they held, they do the battle reenactments, which are just a bit like, just stuff. There's an awful <laughs> lot going on. And um, the guy that, if you ever go, if you've ever been when they had it there, the guy that sort of narrates it is Lord Stanley and he's hilarious. But at the start, they have a minute or two minutes silence. And at first I thought, okay, like we did yesterday. But I thought, well, no, actually, they're right. Again, it's that something else we talked about was you feel very detached from these people mm. because these things happened in such huge amounts of time ago. It's inconceivable to us in a lot of capacities. But mm. they are no different to the people that so tragically lose their lives in battles and wars now. Mm -hmm. They left people yeah. behind emotionally, know brothers sisters mothers fathers children mm. and that's that's no different and the implications of losing the the man in your family at that point you know there, there was no welfare system you just starved to death possibly there was no child care you know the, the children probably won't even go to well there wouldn't have been a school so you know a mother left without a husband then and again that goes back into genealogy and stuff yeah people remarried really fast mm. um because it was a necessity for survival yeah you, know, you had to be in a partnership mm. yeah it, it, it was which, which sounds awful but then i'm sure there were many love matches and people that grew to you yeah know, you know but it's and people might think nowadays that that sounds very callous but there is again for all our other instincts we do have to survive and if that's what you need to do if someone's bearable but they make life a lot better <laughs> then well you know people make worse choices these days i'm pretty sure there's enough people marry people who are barely <laughs> bearable <laughs> you know these things happen throughout time don't they so um yeah so we don't learn from history there you go we haven't, we haven't yeah, there you go. There. cold hard evidence <laughs> So, um, Taste clothes. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember going to a few places as a child and on my 10th birthday, I went to Hampton Court mm. and I've, I've written an article about this a long time ago for the Tudor Society and it was about how things have changed. So I loved it and I really enjoyed it. But then it really was, you went in because this was a <clears throat> number of years ago that I don't get <laughs> close. Um, and you went in and they gave you the tour and I remember the fountain, you know, and, and then you came out. But obviously nowadays, history has kind of had to change a little bit because again, things have changed in 
those few years since I went as a 10 year old. Mm -hmm. And people look at different ways to being entertained. But I think that sometimes gave people a rather dry edge. Mm -hmm. You went in, you walked around, someone told you about the furniture and who died and, and you left. And, you know, a lot of people won't remember this, but open university lectures. So when before we had everything like that, open university would be at 2 a.m., you know, yeah. on Thursday morning and you got up and there was somebody in bad brown corduroy trousers telling you about the battle of whatever it was this week and um you know and I think that was very much kind of the image of history yes so we've had to bring it on from there mm. and um what do what do you think has changed in that capacity how have we brought it forward to make it more interesting and more accessible to people especially because we're still trying to plow the younger generations Mm. into finding their interests i think um there's definitely been a lot more money available to places so um for instance bletchley park yeah. i love and i was really i find i think i'm really fortunate because i went I, when it was enthusiast run and i've been over the years so i've seen it change now it's um kind of far more commercial if you like um and i think that's the way it's had to go is things have become more commercial because they've they have to have money spent on them effectively. It's a shame because actually when they're enthusiasts run, it's, um, you, it's very quaint and things aren't, I don't know if they could do it now, but you know, you had access to places that are sort of been untouched and things like that, whereas now it's, it's more formal. But the, um, I think the, the, the technology that comes with that, the way they interpret things, the way you can, um, they've spent more time looking at the stories and it's a bit more balanced, I hope. Um, Partly went to hope. Yeah, hope. <laughs> hope. Well, you know, you yeah, you know, because because then you, yeah, I always hope because you 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 take, I don't know, you go to, obviously you go to places and you hear a story and you think, oh, I know, no, I'm right. Had, Anne Boleyn had six fingers. I got told. Oh God, you know that. Yeah, oh, God, I hope <laughs> no, I hope no one's still so touting that one. Oh, that's I hope no one's still touting that one. But you never know. Um, so I, I think I think um, I think that we've got dramas. I think I, I think because people I, I, it goes, it's sort of a chicken and egg thing. Because people are more interested, more money's been spent, so the facilities are better, so the accessibility is better, so the research is better, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, it, and it, it's kind of a nice cycle of people are interested, so we'll make it yeah we'll spend money on it, and then people are more interested, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, which is great and, and where they can make places accessible you know physically accessible for people as well I know that's not possible in everywhere but there's yeah. some really good innovations around it um, there's a place uh, number one the Crescent in Bath which is a beautiful um, I think it's Georgian house um, so you can't obviously do anything to the internal building so they've built a lift on the outside excellent yeah you know, I, guess. I went I went to Kenilworth Castle with a to with a, a baby in a push chair. Now you've been to Kenilworth Castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Imagine how far that went. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't do that again. Um, no. <laughs> no, I mean, the reason I kind of like because you know, we really do have this image of sort of people like in tweed blazers and there's nothing wrong with tweed blazers, I quite like them. But you know, it's that people go, Oh no, I don't yeah. want to go there. But I was writing because I thought, you know, Warwick Castle. I love Warwick Castle. But it's been run by the Merlin Group. Oh, it's it's so commercialised, and yeah. I, like you say, I do get where they're coming from, and it's a balance, isn't it? But yeah, I think I it there, and they had they had the they do the, the hawking and stuff, don't they? Oh, and yeah. they wouldn't come back. This bird would not come back. And he was going yeah. actually. He said, "I'll tell you a story." She said, She's only been doing this a week. She came back eventually. Said, "But the bird that used to do it, we had to stop using her because she kept like." going off and then one day she took down a duck in front of an enormous group of school children and then attempted to kind of disembowel it in the face. It's what they do that's what I'm exactly about. but yeah. that those children will remember the disemboweled duck story whereas they may have not remembered the bit you know the warwick the kinmaker story they probably don't I, yeah i think i think there's definitely a balance like they shouldn't if it becomes theme parkish then yeah it's difficult that's not good for anybody but yeah i mean you've got well you've got a lot i don't know that historians have become celebrities now 
which you know you've got your Dan Jones with his tattoos and bad language and <laughs> jackets which I love and then you've got Susanna with her amazing curls and nose ring and um or nose piercing and I don't know somehow that took off yeah. And so, um, I mean, it makes you wonder whether the guys in Tweed were really that interested because they weren't, they didn't seem that interested. When somebody's passionate about their topic, it doesn't really even matter what it is. You know, someone could be talking to you about Lines. making widgets, but if they're passionate about it, then you'll listen, you know, you'll be interested. And I think there's just been, we're really lucky that at this time we have had a big influx of people who want other people to be as enthusiastic and and learn as much as they have you know there's not a it's not a stiff I know this and I'm going to keep it to myself and just give you little bits and yeah it, it's very much oh, I found this out and I want you to know about it because yeah. it's really interesting so um I don't know how that's happened but we're I think we're very fortunate that it has I think for me, living in Leicestershire, what's ignited it a lot is the discovery and then the reinterment of Richard III. An incredible. That is the, the find, he, finding him was Unbelievable. just. Unbelievable. It, it, yeah, there the, 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 How? We won't see anything like that again. No, that was absolutely incredible. Yeah. To, yeah. to actually find him. Yeah. Just, and yeah. In the way it happened. So unlikely that it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's so so round here where I am. I mean, I'm, I'm not from around here, but originally, but that really ignited a lot of people's passion for history, mm. and more specifically, obviously, this period. So, but it's it's still something. And then I think things like Six, the musical, and I yeah. know, I mean, I was supposed to go and see that, but it's been postponed, which is just one of those things. But it's really people kind of, and initially I was a bit like. Mm, yeah, no, I, yeah. And I saw it's on YouTube. If anyone wants to find it, they did a flash mob outside the Tower of London. Was it last August? I think. Ah, okay, I don't know. I'll, I'll put the link under here actually because it's brilliant. And I looked at it, and so many young girls, hundreds, with the t-shirts, knew all the words. <laughs> and I just thought, you know what? If that's the avenue, yeah, brings them in. Then, and my friend who I was supposed to be going with, Vicky, she said to me, "I know why you're doing it, Catherine, but you need to just stop thinking that everything has to be 100% factually correct." She said, "Just take it for what it is and enjoy yourself." And I was like, okay, "You're right." Well, that, right? <laughs> I, I shared a post the other day just that I was going to uh, watch the Tudor series again because yeah. I watched when it yeah. first came out. And the amount of responses that I had, which were, oh my God, I love that series. That's how I got into the Tudors. I know it's not correct, but, but. it's what ignited my interest. And then I went and found out what the, you know, the actual facts were. And also we have to be a bit, bit sensible with what we deem a fact as well. You know, yeah. there's very, everything, everything is, is from a book viewpoint. I suppose it goes back to not necessarily the facts, but the awful things like Anne Boleyn's got six fingers. You just oh. yeah, oh, total, total made up. <laughs> but then it's interesting. But then it's interesting. Why was that made up? Yes. Who made it up, yeah. and for what purpose? And that's part of history as well. Mm. Um, it's not just a series of events and this happened and this happened. You know, the, the whole. This is why I like the fact. I, you know, this, I come back from the psychology point of view. You know, why? Why did? Why does someone feel so compelled to? Um, make her out to be uh, you know effectively a, a witch who a witch. could you know who, who, who could manipulate men's feelings you know men are the powerhouses men are the decision makers because women are so feeble and yet and she, yet she can she can um she you know she can fool the king she can entice her you know men of court into her own bed over and over again you know somebody must really you know somebody really hated her to be able to or really had a um they had to have people believe that she was such a wicked person claire's done a video about that hasn't she i'll try and find that and put that underneath oh yeah that? anything about Anne Boleyn, just ha you have to go to claire she's yeah fantastic. and but she, she's another one it's just in, in enduring as well and she said you don't necessarily have to believe that anne was an amazing person in every capacity but her story is just enduring and obviously whatever she did we always hear this time of year she deserved what she got and nobody deserved what nobody I deserves got. to have their head cut off 
and leave the author and they haven't done anything and they've watched their other people go out and die innocently for it as well that is just not something that should happen to anybody no no exactly but but then again i think that's that there's a big wedge in time so those people don't seem real if they don't now everyone would be mortified but imagine someone being pulled out into the town squares now and you know that would no that is you know that that would make us you know and people would just be traumatized Hmm. by it but it's interesting when you say you say about you know if you like Anne or or not like Anne I think I think we um if you truly want to understand history and if we if we if we sort of pin our badge on liking somebody or not liking somebody you close yourself off to understanding the whole of them and none of us living or dead have been perfectly good or perfectly bad um especially if you've been alive for a little while you've probably done a mix of quite a few things and again what you what you consider bad depends on what your own values are so that not it's not inherently a bad thing potentially you know you know Catherine Howard committed adultery do you do you really you know d- did she actually deserve to die for committing adultery it's just that at that time you know that was considered enough to kill someone for you know so it's all go was like and you couldn't have anyone upset Henry that on its own no. death sentence it wasn't, wasn't it really basically so that poor girl and so many people willing to do his bidding um i mean he he would he's yeah i don't know if i'd want to meet him or not you kind of can think how was he so charismatic um he would chop then, my head off he I, w- I would annoy the hell out of him within about 20 minutes he would chop my head off um, although I have produced an heir and a spare, but um, so you've done your job, but you can get, get lost yeah. now. You've done your thing. Yeah. But other than that, he would chop my head off. He would hate me. He would find a way to get rid of me in about two seconds flat. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey ho! But fortunately, we don't live in the in the time of Henry the Eighth. Right. Um, although you could probably see some similar characters in other. You know, in, in in powerful positions now. But then I suppose them. that again just goes back to human nature. There will always be people fighting for wealth and power, mm. and then possibly in of, often starting off without good intentions, but occasionally starting off with good intentions. But then it overwhelms them, and they don't want to. Yeah, they just don't want to relinquish that, whatever it costs. And yeah. obviously the princes in the tower thing is a huge debate. And what I will say is what a lot of people say, we don't know. It's as simple as that. We don't know. Um, and there's lots of arguments for and against different people that all work equally well. But, you know, this, this is in no way sort of justifying if Richard had them put to death at that time, if he did, I would know nobody would say that that was the right thing to do. But in the context of his situation and how times were, I could understand why you do it. Well, there's literally like, you know, you don't need, you, there are people that their pure existence had implications. You know, Queen Elizabeth and Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah. Mary Queen of Scots being alive had implications. It turned out that it didn't really help with, <laughs> at all uh, executing her, but um the idea was it would be better if she did, didn't exist anymore. Yeah. You know, and for Richard, perhaps it would just be better if they didn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um, and it was a means to an end. That's yeah. why we have these phrases, you know, they don't come out of nowhere. So <laughs> means to ends. I don't know, Shakespeare is responsible for quite a lot of them, isn't he? Yes, he is. Well, he's responsible for, he's responsible for why we call it the Wars of the Roses. He's responsible for a lot of because he wrote his histories didn't he which again were still for entertainment so um yes yeah, shakespeare well we could start on shakespeare yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear it's, it is it is a never-ending never-ending and i think that's something else as well with history is that when you're at school maybe not so much now because i don't know history is taught in quite a straight line isn't it mm. oh and yes 
it, and of course it isn't so no and it's interesting um how would you carve it up because you've got to you've got to carve it up somehow yeah for those sort of educational um, purposes yeah yeah and uh but yeah the, 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 you lose context as soon as you do that so it's because mm. uh, even you could you know we carve it up into times but how much do we look worldwide as to what happened at the same time yeah no? definitely um, you need to look at what's happening in europe as well don't you you're and further afield where was i uh wiltshire where they've got um they've got a, a, a oh, just, they've got the finds from stonehenge there you know there's amber that came from oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna forget now but you know it came from i don't egypt or somewhere a long way away you know and this was um jewelry so this was for this wasn't something that had to be transported that far because it was necessary for construction or it was a food this was for adorning somebody yeah. you know so people were aware that people existed in, so, and not only were they aware but they were doing trade yeah, yeah. the silk roads is a yeah. huge book again another we were talking about how big some books are and I oh, no, um, yeah yeah <laughs> so again that's unaudible just to hide how how big it is for me um uh you know trade routes through from China for I don't know thousands of years yeah um so yeah this, <laughs> <laughs> this is this is, a, this is a, you know this, this is why I am sure we are going to be back in the future and maybe going off on another sort of well thank you so much i'm going i don't know how long we've been doing this for so um i don't know <laughs> i didn't even know oh, well. we started in the end but thank you so much for giving us your time because i know that you are super busy and you are going to now record your this week in british history aren't you i am yes yes so i will looking for that my... coming out tomorrow thank you. Thank so you. um and i'm sorry i won't see you on the first of june I know we will we will we'll reschedule we, yeah, will reschedule. We, make, we will make up for lost time when we can because we're gonna go was it where else were we gonna go at the end of june can't remember there was a medic because judith arnott was going to be there wasn't she yeah yeah oh i, I don't know <laughs> i can't even remember anymore but we will make up for lost time as we soon well. as we can yeah so but thank you so much for all that you do and keep posting all the videos once i put this up i'll get some links and stuff together so all your bits and pieces thank and you. the cod pieces thing with danny dyer <laughs> there's video about dispelling myths on amberlin and i'll put those on so if you haven't watched the cod pieces thing then do it's brilliant well I, I haven't seen it so i'm gonna watch that and also yeah. i'll oh, send you the link i've got mortified. she just looks mortified <laughs> poor thing um but yeah i've also got a video that claire and i did um busting some Anne Boleyn myths at we were at the Tower of London at the time so we <clears throat> we did we did some based on some of the ones that are kind of tower linked so um I'll find those as well yeah. yes so so hopefully that will give people lots especially if they've got hangovers this morning it might give them a little bit of something I know a few people who've got hangovers this morning so a little bit of quiet tudory time beautiful that's what we all need <laughs> do especially at the minute it's keeping us going i think at the minute isn't it to it is. yeah, sort, of, uh, sort of have these conversations and relive the things and talk about the things that we enjoy basically yes so so thank you so much and i will definitely talk to you again soon yes that'd be lovely yeah. thank you Catherine. bye bye, bye. very well bye